there. I think whatever is going to happen, it's got to be recorded because this is an important conversation, I feel. So. Mr. Yogi Shambhu. It's been a while. It has been. Wow. A lot has happened since we have spoken. We're, the world seems to be a different place. Yes. Yes. How many people are in a pivotal time? Uh, I've never seen so many people trying to... to uh, Scramble, find strength to have clear conversations that they would have avoided. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Explain. Well, there's a lot of people that are having, that are needing to have conversations, partially either because they're in a, they're in a cognitive disagreement with someone or they, um, they've been pushed into close proximity with people because uh, there's so much less that's happening. People are forced together uh, where they were able to usually leave uh, proximity with people. Uh, now they're, they're, they're stuck together so intensely. Um, and so I'm finding that there's a lot of people trying to uh, manage this. Yeah, and struggling. But uh, there's certainly a lot of boldness. There's certainly a lot of, uh, of unexpected success, but so much stress. I've just, I've never, you know, my, my private practice is just filled with so many people um, just pushed to the absolute limit of what they feel that they can tolerate uh, to the point of despair, actually. So if you had a sort of a thumbprint on the pulse of the species on the emotional body of what you are seeing throughout all of your clients what would you suggest is happening um people are 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 finally feeling at their wits end um they there is a sense of of dying hope where people had hope that that they would just return back to normal especially people who uh went along with the what the government what the pharmaceutical industry had su suggested will will bring them back to the normal and now that it's not going back to normal there is a there's a lot of indignation a lot of uh but you but you told me that it was going to be this way so in a sense it's adulting it's it's people being childlike and just looking at authority for uh their freedom and now it's boom we are uh we are in the point of disappointment of disillusionment and now maturity so I'm feeling I'm feeling like there's a lot of people uh, emotionally maturing and uh, grappling with all that disillusionment. Yeah. So the because a lot we haven't spoken in a long time, and I find that a lot of times I find you're at the individual health level, and I'm coming from a global political planetary level but each of us is an individual human and we're, we're all going through this this thing that's occurring and and there's a lot of languaging about what it is but you and i have really spoken really in quite a long time about the big picture of what is happening and i and i, I again i go back to the feeling of you having a hand on the pulse of the species at the emotional level because you're with your practice, you are getting feedback from all of these people, let's say, going through emotional hell. And they come to Shambhu and they go, <laughs> and, they, and, they, and they're giving you this information and you're 
helping them to deal with it, right? Like it, they need assistance, but counsel, but it's kind of like I look to you and your, I, I think you have a very good assessment of let's say what those limits are and where people are at and where, and, and the sort of cognitive dissonance that's happening because they believed something and now they don't because the truth of their experience is different from what they hoped would happen. And so I'm just wondering in a sense, it's kind of like if you, if you were to do an assessment of the, because you brought in the word maturity and, there, and, and we sort of, as a society, we have this ability to sort of give up our authority to the government to say, okay, these guys are in charge. They're going to do good things, or hopefully they're going to do good things. And then we can just go on with our lives. But right now we're in this situation where well, things actually aren't going that well. <laughs> and things are actually seemingly getting a little bit worse. And everyone is having to do a, a really strong self-analysis of themselves. And then their relationship almost with every other person in terms of communicating and coming to the point where, okay, here, here's people that are non-vaxxed and here's people that are vaxxed. And they're very different right now. Each of them have very different worldviews. They have different interpretations of reality, more so than any other time that I have experienced in my life. So I'll, I'll go back to you with this question in terms of where do you think the average Canadian is in terms of their own like self-assessment of health? And then how much do they give up authority to their government? <clears throat> we have more people um, that are starting to, on the vac side, we have people who are starting to hear about vaccine injuries in their community. And those people are being touched there because there, there's been so much othering. There's been tribalism that has really run rampant within the, this situation. And so with tribalism, you have the phenomena of, of seeking reassurance that my position is right. And, and I believe that that's gone on on both, both sides where people are really trying to arm up. You know, they're trying to get their ammunition ready. They're trying to get all of their rationale together to, to um, sustain their position that they found themselves in. But now that there is <clears throat> not just um, a little bit of reporting, but there's in fact a lot of reporting. If you look at VAERS, if you look at the vaccine adverse effect registry system, uh, there are uh, you know tens, hundreds of thousands of people that are having effect. Uh, they are they they have a negative effect. So with that, it's a bit like um, the the gay acceptance issue. You know, someone's like, oh, you know, not in my family or not my child. And so there's this othering going on. You know, it may be fine for them or, you know, that's a horrible thing, but it doesn't happen in my family. And then you have a loved one that comes out as gay and suddenly your whole world uh, becomes less stable. People have been looking for stability for um, you know this entire situation of uh, the pandemic uh, time period, and what I'm finding now is that people are feeling uneasy because they are no longer able to anticipate stability. They are actually it, it's coming through to them that a you know we we have a third booster getting, um, you know, in Israel being um, mandated. <clears throat> we have, and so with the idea of unending boosters, suddenly people on that side of the situation are now uh, starting to question, do I want to do this? 
because really the biggest thing was they were wanting to get over this phase of having to make a decision. It seemed like having a decision to make like that was as stressful as the outcome of the decision for them. Very short-sighted, immediate, you know, I just need to make this decision to make my life more comfortable. And people are starting to come to a realization that there's no comfortable place in sight. It's not that these things are going away. Um, and that was the hope. And so I see people grappling with it. I see people struggling with it. I see people uh, having their emotional uh, stress play out in their relationships. But the one beautiful thing that I see is that people are giving her, if you will. People are throwing down the gauntlet. There are a lot of people saying, hey, look, this seems like a do or die type of a circumstance. The last, you know, third of the movie. Now it's time to really throw down. And what that means is that a lot of people that I'm working with are starting to stand up for their real life, their real personality, their real opinions. And so I see a lot of courage being born from this time period, actually. Uh, I also see a, a lot of, you know, I do see people who have just, it's gone past the point of tolerance. And so they are, they're starting to break down. There is definitely a lot of mental health crises a, as we see out in the world. But I see, you know, some people are when the going gets tough, the tough get going, and they are putting out those tough conversations again and really uh, being real, getting real. Things are getting real. Well, I guess with the vax mandates and the passports, like, it, again, we, we haven't seen this in our time. We haven't seen this in our life. And if we've been moving towards this point, to me, this is where the, the paradigms are meeting. It's like at, at this point, you are deciding, do I participate in this insanity or do I want to, something has, has to be birthed. Something new has to come out of this because I don't, I can't participate in this anymore. I mean, the, the, the lying, like, I mean, there's just how much lying can people take? And then you know, we we're trying to find a reference point for data, right? I mean, didn't they just come up? I don't know if they just came up with it, but the PCR test has been said by the FDA that it doesn't work. And the PCR test is what was used to create all the cases. And then if you look at the number of deaths and then you look at the number of cases and, and you're looking at reality, you know, if the test that they're using doesn't come up with the right numbers how, and everything is based upon these numbers, they're always bringing the numbers in and the numbers are meaningless. And, and if anyone with any astute kind of awareness is really doing a, a thorough research, you know, just like saying, okay, if VARES is the reference point and VARES also says that one to 10% is what they may be getting, that VARES is usually way more in reality is going on. This is just what's reported. And they say that what's reported is only one to 10% of what is reported. So it's like, okay, 5,000 deaths, well, maybe you know, 50,000 deaths. You know, and, and, and so if you're looking at the relationship between the amount of people who are actually dying from COVID because they, they put so many numbers on other deaths, somebody's, you know, got hit by a car and all of a sudden he's died of COVID, you know, because somebody got 10 grand, right? Like they're paying people to, to, to put COVID on, on the certificate. You know, how, how, you know, when you, so when you dive into whatever conspiracy is thinking about, like there's a, a detachment from reality because you can go so far with what you're saying. You can go, okay, I'll go along, I'll go along, I'll go along, I'll go along, but at some point it's breaking down. And then whatever they're putting forward in the news, it, it, all at some point you just hear, well, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie. And so the fabric of our whole society to me is just, it's like the veil is lifting. It is, it is, it is coming up. It is, you know, and now you actually have to take a stand because now they're pushing so hard. They're creating a situation so bad that all of us have to actually do something about it or else, you know, we're talking Orwellian 5G police state. Worst case scenario, if we don't do something, I think in the next couple of years, like this whole thing is like the, in England, 
it stopped, right? It just stopped. The people just said, fuck you, we're not doing it. And the, the Vax passport stopped. So in different countries, the people have stood up and said, fuck that, we don't want that. But in Canada, we're still in this insanity. And, it, you know, so I, I just wonder a bit, because there's, you probably have clients that have been vaxxed or going through the program, need support emotional. And then you have other people who don't want anything to do with the vax and are trying to create a life with this oppression coming in about you can't even create do business. Like they're actually stopping you from doing your business. So how do you contend with those two camps? You, I think you deal with the underlying issue of um, autonomy, of what are your true values and increasing your robust nature, your ability to actually um, be in the midst of these pressures and still stay awake, still stay in contact with your soul. You know, your soul is, is you know, it's an omnipresent experience. If you can get in and tap in to that, that that part of yourself then you can actually have some reprieve from the stresses because if you're vaxxed and things are you know i have clients who are vaxxed they have you know health concerns um i have people that are are um vaxxed and concerned about their family uh you know who are not vaxxed I have unvaccinated people who are completely isolated. Their lives are shutting down, and they and they and they can't do business, as you're saying. And so, it is about accepting the where we're really at. We're in an epic right now. This is you know you can't choose the the time that you're born into, but you can choose how you show up to the time that you've been born in. And so. People are wasting parts of their energy going, no, no, no. Oh, I don't. Oh, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't want to be alive here now. I didn't sign up for this. Well, you know, depending on what you believe metaphysically, you, you can get a different answer with that uh, statement. But ultimately, you're here and you have to accept it. You have to accept that, that we are in a time period where people are at odds with authority and, and the institutions of authority are being reviewed and th this is long overdue and that humans have values and they're willing to fight for certain values and other values they, they will remain tacit with. And so there's also a real internal um, uh, storming of the heart right now. You know, when, when world wars happen, people stand up, they have to stand up and, and it engages that primal strength, that resilience where you are forced to pivot and then reach. And then whatever you're reaching for, there's a certain amount of trust that I'm just spontaneously reaching and I'm, and I'm going to dig in and do it. Now, most, a lot of Canadians in my assessment, are resource extraction um, employees. We are people that are willing to put in the time, work hard, but we rarely question the authority that is being put up upon us. And we're so busy working a good day's work that we're actually emotionally unavailable, we're intellectually unavailable to actually do the real work. Now, I love the fact that I see exceptions to that rule, but people are choosing comfort and stability over realness and actually engaging in the, um, you know, actually asking actually inquiring so they aren't engaging in the inquiry now people are and and i see a lot of people who actually have been vaccinated now standing up and saying 
well, that there's a lot more reactions than I see than I thought. And so regardless of me, I'm actually now starting to think about future generations and where is this going? So good. We are starting to question the authority of these institutions. And, you know, I have some people who are like, I'm just so damn mad because there's no definitive source of information anymore. It used to be these institutions and they're legitimately go going through a life crisis because the, the institutions are breaking down. It's no longer a given. And it, but as you said, it's never been a given. It's, uh, it's been under a veil of propaganda. And now that propaganda is thinning out. It's getting thicker, but there's cracks in the reasoning. And that's what I'm so excited about. I would rather be living in this time period where there's actually a, a more leverage points within the rationale than just a, you know, a time period when things just were going on. Right. I mean, it's so what's what, what do you think is the, the need of the moment? But the need of the moment, the need of the moment is to find your own space, defend your own space but through scheduling and through in, and through leaning on a routine that you can actually generate your own your own experience you can um, tend to your exhausted heart because people are exhausted they're they're just tired of thinking they're tired of feeling so much and when you're in that state you can no longer engage in the game. So you have to know when to tap out and sit on the bench and regain your, yourself. And so um, having a sober assessment of where you are at and how much functioning are you able to really engage in at this time? And then um, be able to... Uh, engage with affinity groups but not get isolated within those uh those groups and then how can i be a part of my community while still staying myself because it's not enough ju just to be functioning in your own world anymore we actually do need an affinity group um, or hopefully several affinity groups, but we can't spread ourselves out too thin as well. At least for me, I'm finding that the people that are really finding fulfillment right now are able to sink deeper and actually make some real, some real progress within a project. And so if you are dedicated to educating yourself, say about the the uh, COVID world, then do that. And, but really do that so that you feel satisfied. So that, you, because we need to be personally satisfied enough that then we can go out into the world and just share our experience, not as definitive experts, but as informed individuals. We are now entering a time when, when personal, um, Education is the new baseline. Everyone who's in the game must be educated uh, uh, to, the, to the best of their ability and to their own satisfaction. And so, uh, so be able to do your maintenance work like cleaning your house and closing your doors so that you can have your stable environment. And then engage in a community group, and then really dive in and actually do the work. There's so many people who are, dis they are di distressed because they're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. The only way to find any type of peace in this time period is to actually do something where you f walk away going, okay, I tried my best hell knows what's going to happen in the end but i tried 
and I did. It's the only way I think. But is it isn't, I mean, isn't that the main point? And I guess going to let's say something like planetary guardians, where whatever affinity group that you choose to participate with, you want to feel like you're contributing. You want to feel as if you're you're part of the solution, not part of the problem. And I think what's happening is there's such a large government kind of thing. Like it's this, it's this big monster. And each of us is this little individual. And we may go to these little affinity groups, but it's just like, how do you deal with this monster? And that as the monster gets worse and worse and worse, because this is the worst I've seen in my lifetime. Like the, this to me is an end game there. They're trying to do something. They're trying to, all across the planet, they're trying to change society to such a degree that you're going to need the passports. Those passports are going to be assessed in some way, like China. They're bringing in the 5G network. And they, they have this plan, which is, which is now so obvious. It's just come out into the world. And so to me, you're, you're, again, you have your, your finger on the pulse of, the, let's say, the, the normal human being. Because I, I don't think... Like there are the people, let's say, that are doing the negative things and there's the people fighting against these people and they're different than everybody else. And most people, they just want to live their life. They just want to have a nice family. They just want to, you know, enjoy life and live it. They're not thinking about taking over countries. They're not thinking about central banks. They're not thinking about, you know, who in the history of the world conspired to create what we're in right now. They don't care. But the problem is now it's affecting everybody. Like it's, it's, it's too obvious. Before you could live your life and get away with it and not even think about it. But now they are actually stopping us from even in, enjoying life, each of us. And so like, I, I guess what I wanted to talk to you was it's just like, I, I feel like the work that I've been doing is coming to the point of almost entering the world. Like I almost have, the, the card that you know sort of like a, ah. like like getting getting close wow for for the cards to come out but not just the cards software where as a facilitator you can use the conversation types and guide the group to achieve a goal so there's a software and a card set coming together where we're beginning to look at team training, team communication. Planetary Guardians is about to enter the world. Yes, yes. <laughs> but oh. but <laughs> there's some few problems. <laughs> Captain Sweep may not be in his right mind. I mean, I <laughs> I have been you know reclusing and 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 doing all those things, attempting to do the things which sort of been blocked this sort of like the main product from coming into the world like my main business my main business is that card set and i've had it 15 years I've been proving it it's, it's done it's ready but i haven't brought it into the market and i'm finding at each step of the way there's blocks within me that are sort of stopping the larger success and whether it's a fear success or it's it's like saying to the world like coming into the world at this time and going okay well I have a solution or I have a tool or I have something that I think can help. And, you know, essentially at its ground level, it's turning words into lenses and using it as a tool to see things. It's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. I hear in the, the languaging of the people is people use the word lenses a lot more than I've ever heard before. Like, oh, what lens are you looking through? Right? The, we've come to the point in our culture where we understand that the, the cognitive maps that we have in our mind are not reality. <laughs> the words we use are not reality. These are, these are all symbols, but essentially lead to a grand illusion where we don't have a common reference point of language anymore because there's so many different worldviews. There's so many different perspectives and everyone's thinking so differently and interpreting reality so differently and now we have again this great divide but my let's say perspective or what i always want to bring into the arena that doesn't want that most conversations never get to is this 
sort of diabolical design of the evil ones behind the scenes that are sort of contriving to make these things happen that never get addressed, never get acknowledged. And we're always left in there sort of divide and conquer tactics and fight among ourselves. And then we just sort of lose. And so to me, it's like, the, again, it has reached a point where so many people across the world are paying attention to the fact that, you know, that's, <laughs> The governments don't really seem to be on our side. Like they're not representing the people. They're representing some psychopathic global elite that behind closed doors make things happen. And then the government sort of put them into being. Like, as you said, resource extraction. This whole world is based upon empires of resource extraction. They go steal the stuff from everybody and a few people get it and the rest just act as slaves. And so we're coming to the point in our cultural awareness that we have the internet, we have Zoom, we're talking like this, just me and you, but there's millions of other conversations happening all across the planet where there's a lot of people that are pretty awake and illuminated, you know, spreading information that's very different from your normal news. And I see you as one, I see me as one, I see the people I interact with as people who they're very different from the normal norm. And so to me, this is a news channel. What you need, what you and I do is unique. There's nothing like it. And if I say a disconnect with you at times, it's I don't think you honor this. I think this little thing we have is a weekly show. This is something where we're both coming with such unique perspective that together we create an understanding for the audience that isn't created out there. They're not bringing together holistic yogic interpretations of reality and bringing multiple, you know, um, things. Like you, you, your interpret, your your knowing of yoga, and the yoga philosophy, and the depth and the breadth, and there's so much to it. And the Western mind needs that, but the Western mind also needs to break from the spell of this corporate media that has us all believing things that aren't true. So I'm just wondering about your timing in terms of. Uh, um, yeah, I have to go soon, um, but I am. I would love to like read restart the conversation again um either later today or um in the next couple of days my fridays opened up unexpectedly there's some things that are more open well maybe on friday i could take you through the software and show it to you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i i want your feedback i i want i want to see what you think about what to do with it because we're i would love to do that testing great and i i drew a, a a card set of reading on your on um the blocks that you personally are bringing into the situation so i'm going to take a photo of it i'll send it to your chat and then uh let's actually go in and and work from that uh the next time that we work as well <laughs> the old reading for the sweet trick <laughs> you know we always have to be d distilling ourselves we everyone is flawed everyone has flaws in their diamond at this point um and we need uh it but but it's not this or that it's not the you know either i have flaws or i'm a successful person it's successful people have flaws and it's and it, again we have to adjust our expectations to to let both occur at the same time don't let one eclipse the other um and to because if we allow proportional representation of all of our personal qualities we're going to get through we're going to be a contribution and and uh, we're going to be a success i believe in your system i believe in your card set i've seen it work I, I feel it's magic and I'm just excited for you to get it out there in the midst of all of the, you know, the personal help, the, uh, or not, not just personal, but the success toolkits that are being offered out there. Yours is right up there. And, uh, and I want the opportunity to, to be able to send people to your website so that it can be purchased or uh, I'm not sure if you're, you're doing it through Amazon or not, but uh, yeah. 
Well, I'm hoping one day that you have your own card set within the the line because there, there's so much knowledge that I think each person has and, and card sets are like a, a unique way to bring it into the world. So that's one of my uh, Yeah, well, hey, hopes. if you uh, give me your Etsy, I'll go buy some. <laughs> Excellent. Let, let's uh, do that. We'll talk um, about, right about it. Yeah about Friday. Okay. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for listening in. This has been Captain Sweep and Shambhu, Yogi Shambhu. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Captain Sweep. Great to see you. Great to see you.